this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Mr. Brock, you had an issue. Do you like to raise? Yes, floor I'd, like, yours? I'd like to move a motion, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> motion to read. That in relation to the press release uh, issued by Minister Champagne on June the 4th, 2024, okay. announcing the resume funding to SDTC projects under reinforced contribution agreements signed with ISED, the committee orders the production of all such contribution agreements and that they be that they be deposited with the clerk of the committee within 14 days following the adoption of this motion. There is, in our respectful opinion, on the uh, conservative bench, uh, great value and relevancy to this particular motion. And I'll break it down as follows. Um, it was a pivotal moment for Minister Champagne to make the announcement that he did on June the 4th. As you know, for several months prior to that, there was a suspension of funding, which occurred in the fall of 2023. I, I have pulled the actual Government of Canada uh, press release on that particular date, June the 4th. And um, his commentary, he was quoted actually in this particular um, document. and. He indicates as follows, that effective immediately, so I read that to mean June the 4th of 2024, SDTC will also resume funding under a reinforced contribution agreement with ICED for eligible projects in a sector vital to our country's economy and clean growth transition. In line with the Auditor General's findings, my department will enhance oversight and monitoring of funding during the transition period. So we, we have a number of difficulties um, with that statement and it requires clarification. I guess the first observation I would make in terms of resuming funding is I don't know if that's actually accurate. It may, it may have occurred, there may be partial funding, but a full resumption of funding, I'm not so sure about that. And I raise these issues, uh, Mr. Chair, because of an article uh, that was produced uh, yesterday, September the 4th, 2024, um, where a Peter MacArthur was quoted, and Peter MacArthur, for the record, is the chair of the Ontario Clean Technology Industry Association. And while he speaks at, about the impacts that the suspension had on the industry, what's quite not, uh, noteworthy in this document, to this day, so effective September the 4th, 2024, to this day, MacArthur told the Toronto Star, the money has yet to start flowing again. Now, Obviously, both versions of that statement can't be true at the same time. Is Mr. MacArthur in error? I don't think so, given his, his position in the industry. Is, is uh, the minister in error? Is the minister trying to give the impression that um, all is well and lessons have been learned and a new setup is in place to restore confidence uh, with Canadians with this particular program? We don't know. Um, this isn't the first time where the integrity and the character of Minister Champagne has been put into question at this committee and other committees. We know that the whistleblower at SDTC, who ultimately resigned, was not fired, ultimately resigned, did not receive a compensation payout, did not receive any other bonuses, simply resigned. He's got nothing to lose. And he made it abundantly clear at committee, and again, I, I, I apologize, sir, if I can't be precise as to what committee he testified at. It could have been at industry. I could be mistaken. But he testified quite clearly that Minister Champagne lied, that he lied to committee, that he's lied to parliamentarians, that he's lied to Canadians, in terms of when he first found out 
about the irregularities at mm. STT. Mr. Brock, I, I appreciate your tone and everything. If you could yeah. just avoid unparliamentary language. Well, um, I'm not calling this not for myself. I'm, I'm calling the whistleblower. All right. The whistleblower quite clearly indicated that he lied. All right. It's just, not my words. I, 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 I'd ask you just to use some decorum here, please. Sure. And we have evidence against this backdrop that has been produced in the last several weeks that an assistant deputy minister of Minister Champagne's department actually attended each and every board meeting at SDTC and clearly and should have brought all of these issues regarding the conflicts of interest to the attention of his deputy minister who in turn reports directly to Minister Champagne. So to suggest that Minister Champagne only found out about the issues in the fall of 2023, I believe is disingenuous. To further reinforce that point, Mr. Chair, we have the tape recorded conversations of the Assistant Deputy Minister McConaughey, who didn't realize that he was recorded with the whistleblower. And McConaughey was very, very concerned to the point, and I'm just paraphrasing, to the point of simply saying, the minister's going to freak out. Minister Champagne is going to freak out when he hears about what's going on at SDTC. He's going to want to shut it all down. Now, are we to believe, are Canadians expected to believe that the strong commentary from the assistant deputy minister was not shared with the DM? was not shared with Minister Champagne, I think that's a pretty big stretch. So again, my words, Chair, not the words of the whistleblower, the integrity and character of Minister Champagne is, is clearly at issue here. What we also found out on Tuesday, and these were questions that I put to the representatives of the NRC, is they're, they're not supervising, they're not monitoring what's going on currently at SDTC, they got nothing to do with it. So to our point that we made on Tuesday, Mr. Chair, is essentially the same old operations at SDTC with a new chair and two new directors. Now, I had questions to put to NRC officials, but I chose not to ask them because clearly they're gonna, they would have said to me, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Brock, we don't know that answer. And the question would have been, what are the reinforced terms of the contribution agreement? We know it's not listed anywhere on the ICED website. It's not listed anywhere on the SDTC website. So what does that mean, reinforced contribution agreement? We as parliamentarians, Mr. Chair, should have access to those agreements so that we can review the terms, determine are they consistent with the old contribution agreements that were so readily not followed. So that's a concern that we have that's reflected in the motion. The other issue is my department will enhance oversight and monitoring of funding. Well, what does that mean? We simply don't know to what extent is the new chair and the new directors providing the appropriate governmental uh, oversight to the same old SDTC. We simply don't know. So I think it's incumbent upon this committee, sir, to obtain those documents, to verify that they do exist, to determine and contrast and compare how it improves the oversight mechanism, how it provides assurances to Canadians that we're not going to go down the same old road of liberal insiders greasing their pockets again on the taxpayer dime. So I would hope that every committee member would certainly find favor in having access to documents so that we can discharge our respective responsibilities. What we need here is transparency. What we need here is accountability. And we all know that sunshine is the best antidote for transparency. So that's why I think this motion has merit and I would encourage all my colleagues to support. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Khalid, I believe that's it. Sorry, Chair, I wasn't sure if there were any hands raised uh, from our virtual colleagues that um, that have joined us here today. Um, I'm a little bit perplexed, Chair. You know, like, I mean, I, and then I, I, I would quote, uh, you know, my, my colleague and the number of times he said may. Uh, well, may not. Uh, you know, whether it is one thing or the other. Like, it, it, this seems a bit... Um, a bit challenging for me. I'm not sure what the objective of this motion is. I'm not sure whether this is the right committee for, for this motion to be presented in. But what I, I do realize, and I, and I read the motion right now, uh, the press release issued by Minister Champagne uh, announcing resumed funding to SDTC projects under reinforced contribution agreements signed with I ISAD. The committee orders the production of all such contribution agreements and that they be deposited with the clerk of the committee within 14 days following the adoption of this motion. That is probably one of the most vague um, motions that I've, I've seen in a very long time, given the context of, of why we're here, what we're doing here. Um, and I, you know, I, I've seen so many of, of my colleagues over these years as, as a young liberal, as uh, going through my, my law school and, um, and, and really actively participating in, uh, in, in just keeping an eye over what happens in, in Canadian democracy. I, I remember past governments. Uh, and uh, conservative members, including their, their opposition leader, posing with massive checks uh, with companies and saying, hey, look look at what we did, look at what we did. And I, so I'm not sure if that's the angle that they're trying to get at, that, that uh, you know, uh, members of parliament should not celebrate the success of industry or, or should, uh, should recuse themselves of money that is being doled out in positive ways, and again, I don't want to take away from the importance of, of the SDTC study that is going on here. This motion is a blatant play in trying to expand and to, to really try to go down all of these rabbit holes to try to find something, anything that will vilify the clean tech sector. And I think that we cannot, as the Public Accounts Committee, we cannot and should not be responsible for its death. I think that the responsibility of this committee is to ensure that we are effectively using taxpayer dollars to the betterment of our country. And what this motion represents is the exact opposite of that. So I'll stop there for a second, Chair, and, uh, and I would like to get back onto the, the bottom of the list. Thanks, Chair. I'm, there's so much, I believe Mr. Perkins is first. But if that's not the case, you're, every one of your colleagues wants to speak to it, so it's, it, it, well, I just, you, 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 you gave a look as if you had nothing to say, Mr. Perkins, I'll, and I'll, I know I'll, that is probably uh, an impossibility, so the floor uh, is yours. Uh, I'll be quick and give my colleagues a chance to, to add in, but I'll just, I'll just point out that uh, while heartfelt the last statement really had nothing to do with the issue before us. And the issue before us, the issue before us has nothing to do with this bizarre claim. Oh, I can hear you. The issue before us is, the issue, just hang on. That's okay, just, that's okay, Larry. The, uh, um, the, issue bef the, the issue before us is the question of the government releasing the secret documents of the contribution agreements that lay out where SDTC can and cannot spend money. It is the, those documents that are the basis of the Auditor General's report. They're what the Auditor General used to see whether or not $58 million out of the small sample was misspent or not. So that hasn't got to do with every clean tech com company that exists in Canada. Every clean tech company in Canada has not applied for money through the Liberal Green Slush Fund. Only a few select ones that are attached to well-connected Liberals got the money. 
82%, according to the Auditor General's report. So the issue that's before us isn't the broad public policy discussion on how best to grow our clean technology company. It's about why does the government want to hide the contribution agreements? Why do the Liberals want to hide the contribution agreements that lay out the restrictions on the Green Slush Fund, on what it can and cannot spend, the billion dollars that this minister gave it, and the $22 billion that this organization has spent of taxpayer money in, since its inception in 2001. That's what this is about. It's about just simply saying, show us the documents. Show us the documents so that we can judge the report correctly that the Auditor General presented to this committee. I thought it would be incumbent upon this committee in its role of scrutinizing Auditor General reports to get access to the documents that the Auditor General report is based on. But the government seems intent on trying to hide that too. I know I do have a list running here, and first I have Mr. Brock. I'm going to defer to my colleague, Mr. Cooper. Ms. Very good, Mr. Cooper. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, with the greatest respect to my colleague, Ms. Callot, opposite, who references, who repeatedly referenced going down rabbit holes, the only member going down rabbit holes is Ms. Colleed, because for uh, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, she talked about everything under the sun other than the motion at hand. Uh, I think she even went so far as to say that she disagreed with the findings of the Auditor General with respect to the misuse of taxpayer dollars. $390 million that went out the door improperly, including $330 million that were funneled directly into companies in which SDTC board members have contribution agreements with. The, Ms. Kellogg complains that the uh, green tech sector is being impacted as a result of the freezing of funds. Well, those funds were frozen because of liberal corruption. So she should respectfully look at the record of her government because it is her government and her government's corruption that is directly led or it led to the freezing of funds once the minister got caught turning a blind eye to all of the corruption that was taking place at SDTC. And the arrogance and the utter disrespect for Canadian taxpayers to say in the face of 186 conflicts of interest, in the face of $400 million that went improperly out the door, but somehow it's too much to ask for some basic transparency on the part of the minister who said that he was going to see during this transition that there would be enhanced oversight and monitoring. What is that? enhanced oversight and monitoring. The minister hasn't said, we don't know, we need to find out. Is there, in fact, enhanced oversight and monitoring, or, or are those just words from the minister that haven't been followed through in the way of action? Is it too much to ask when the minister says that he, his department is resuming funding, uh, that, uh, that, that funding would be resumed through so-called reinforced contribution agreements to see exactly what those contribution agreements look like. You know, the minister issues this release on June 4th saying, I'm taking action. We're going to have more oversight, more monitoring, reinforced contribution agreements, in which would involve taxpayer money going out the door. Well, after this $400 million colossal web of liberal corruption, as we get to the bottom of what the heck is going on, 
I don't think it's too much to ask to see what those agreements look like, to see what follow-through has actually been done as the government proceeds to transfer over this green slush fund to uh, the National Research Council. We know the minister hasn't even bothered to pick up the phone or sit down with the president of the National Research Council. That's how much interest this minister, who time and again has been AWOL on the job, uh, I guess as he works to uh, succeed the captain of the Titanic, the prime minister, to become the liberal leader, but that's a whole other issue. Um, and, and so in face of all that, Ms. Khaled says this motion is about killing the green tax sector. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with providing accountability and transparency that has been completely lacking, notwithstanding the minister saying, I'm taking action on June 4th. Well, what action has the minister taken? We need to find out. And I'm taking action on behalf of the committee. This meeting here, is adjourned here. for resources reasons. Thank you.